and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's Gospel, as we see the message, our Lord is preparing us for this path that we are approaching, the new path of repentance, the path of fasting is just two weeks away and that's why the holy fathers established these specific reader readings for us in order to little by little to prepare ourselves spiritually to this new path that will lead us to the resurrection so and he also is preparing his apostles and disciples for this great event that had to happen. And as every general that has to do the last battle, beforehand he went to the place to examine everything for the last time. As we are hearing him first, he is sending his disciples to a place telling them in detail exact that they will go there and they will find this young donkey, this uh, tide over there and to bring it. So as you see, as a God Almighty that knows all things, he knew exactly what will happen and he's giving them these directions. If anyone would say anything, just tell them that the Lord has need of it. Right? So he knew exactly what will happen. As, because as we see from, from the gospel, definitely the disciples, when they went there, they did not know that people. They just was, why, was asked why you're doing that. And he said, the Lord has need of it. So did the Lord know, knew them? Maybe not physically, but spiritually he knows everyone and each one of us. And each one's need. So, but here in this specific parcel of the gospel, he's talking of the use for the divine services. Because, see, he pointed that there is this call that was never used. Nobody had read it before. He would be the first one. So here he is emphasizing on the, the things that we are using for church. Whatever is main, meant to be for church, it should be only for the church use. So like the things that we have, we're using either for, for the Holy Communion, we, we cannot use them for another uh, purpose or the the baptismal font we cannot use that for another purpose because that's for that purpose and this is what he wanted to to share that you know it was never used so when we are planning to do something to give something it should be always unused that is going to be only for the use of the divine things of the mysteries so only in god's use not that uh, as uh, Cain did, whatever he didn't like, he gave to God, right? And that, that was the reason that God did not accept his sacrifice, because he gave him the, the bad fruits. So, and uh, this applies to us, like many times, someone, uh, especially like in, in Greece, that uh, people has a lot of uh, olive oil, and if it's spoiled, well, let's give it to the church. Well, first you give the good one. Not, not the bad one, the, the, the spoiled one. Because you're pretty much giving to God what you don't like. So you're repeating the sin of Cain. Right? So th this, this is the beginning of his establishment of his church. That he's pointing how we shall take care how serious is God's service and how we have to approach all of this. 
So and after they uh, brought the young colt of a donkey, they put the cloths on it and he sat on it. As it was prophesied earlier from the, the, by the prophets of the Old Testament that he will enter Jerusalem on a donkey called and the, the greeting that they are using Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord even the son of David but again it's not their words but, but this was used by David in the Psalms right so it's not that they came up with this greeting what uh, what was the, their confusion their confusion was that they were waiting for this earthly king not for the the king of heaven the king that will redeem us from the slavery of the <coughs> enemy not the enemy that they thought that the enemy was the Romans that subjugated them and this is what they were looking for they were looking for this warrior this uh, commander as David was to free them from the Roman Empire and even conquer others or subjugate other nations and maybe the Romans themselves. That was their dream and that's where, that was their misunderstanding of the prophecies and of God's incarnation. And that was the reason those that today are greeting, greeting him and throwing their cloths on the, on the road, those that were, were cured by him, in few days they will, the same people will cry out, crucify him. You see how easy we are changing our attitude. How easy we are moving from one to another to another thing. Today he was good, he was Hosanna and the son, the son of David, and tomorrow crucify him. His blood on us and on our children. This is what they said. The same exactly people. Well at this at this point the hierarchs they already had signed the sentence that he has to die. They were just waiting for the perfect moment. Jesus knew that. Of course, those that were rejoicing, they had no idea what is going to happen in a few, in a few days. Even his disciples, it was hard for them to understand. And that's why while everybody was rejoicing, he was just watching because he wanted as a loving God to see them for the last time rejoicing. Because a few days later it's going to be a disaster. And the same people will cry to crucify him. That's why, as a good God, he wanted to see them that way and to remember them the way they were meant to be. Right? So, and the, the evangelist is telling us that it, he entered the temple and it was already late and they withdrew themselves in Bethany with his friends with the people that loved him to spend the last moments the last days of his earthly life also to pray also to give the, la the, the, the last recommendation to his disciples to prepare them to encourage them and of course for himself to get ready for the last battle. And he traced this way 
traced the road, the path for us and for his disciples and for his saints. And as today, we are celebrating the feast of St. Theodore, the Stradilat. A very powerful and strong man that was part of the Roman, Roman uh, Empire, was part of the Roman army, was a general in the Roman army. And he was put in charge <coughs> by the Emperor Licinius himself to rule the city of Heraclea. He was friends with Licinius, with the emperor, and many other people from that environment wanted to be friends with him, to listen to him because he had the rhetorical gift. But when Licinius appointed him to that position, he did not know that he was a Christian. And as soon as he was appointed to that position, he started openly preaching to the people of Heraclea about Jesus Christ, his passion, and that he is the only true God. And a very big number, a very big percentage of the people from that region left the idols, the idolatry, and turned to Christianity, received Christianity, were baptized, and followed Christ. When Licinius heard about that, he was kind of disappointed that he, he loved Theodore very much, and he's sending to Theodore a letter inviting him to a feast and to prepare to prepare that feast and to go together to sacrifice to the idols and give example to others not to fail from their father's faith and to live for Christianity. And he's sending him back another letter say, saying that uh, uh, my dear Licinius, the emperor of Romans, uh, I think that uh, would be better since I'm the governor of Heraclea for you to come here and to prepare this big feast here and that we can together bring sacrifice to the idols in front of others because we don't want the people to leave the faith of our fathers and go to, the, uh, to believe in Christ. The emperor was amazed with his answer and he thought that, uh, well, are just uh, rumors and the, they, because they, uh, they hate him, um, Theodore, that's why they are speaking ill about him. So he came very happy. But uh, the night before the emperor Licinius came, Theodore had a dream. He saw fire coming from the, the sky to earth and going up. And he was questioning, what can this be? What is going to happen? And Jesus spoke to him. This is about you. This is what you're going to, to go through. But be strong. I will be with you. Fear not. So, now Theodorus understood that his time is up. So he prayed the entire night. And when, uh, when he came, the emperor, he asked, Theodore asked him to give him uh, the idols, the statues uh, of the idols, to prepare them for the feast. So what he did, because they were go gold and, uh, made of gold and uh, silver, so he broke them in pieces and gave them, shared them to the poor that did not have money. So somebody saw him 
And when they saw that, they went to Licinius, of course, and told him, look what Theodore uh, did. He uh, broke all our gods, and um, he gave them to the poor. So it, now imagine the statement in what the emperor was when he heard about that. So he, he had no patience to see what uh, Theodore had to say. And Theodore said, uh, when he came in front of he said, uh, listen, uh, you Licinius, you're accusing me, but I want you to know that I am a Christian and uh, I'm uh, the follower of, follower of Christ. And since you appointed me the governor of this city, the majority had left your demons that are, because if they were God such as you are saying, when I broke them, they would burn me. They would do something to me. They would punish me. But nothing like that happened because they're, they're, they're just statues. They're idols. They're idols. They're nothing. So right away, the emperor ordered the soldiers to torture him. They tortured him so bad. Really bad. So, and they threw him in, the, in prison for seven days with no food and no water. So they thought that he would die. But uh, at their great amazement, after seven days, he had like nothing happen. He was like nothing happened to him. So they tortured him again and they decided to crucify him as Jesus Christ was. So let the others see how they will end up. So they crucified him, tortured him to death. They, uh, they, cut, they cut his uh, genital organs. They cut uh, him like almost in half and uh, left him on the cross for the night that uh, you know he will die and he was praying on the cross and asking god why did you depart from me why did you leave me and the angel came and took him from the cross healed him no scars no nothing completely healed so and he said no he did not leave you alone he's he was always with you and he will be with you to the end but you still have to to endure so Licinius in the morning sent soldiers to to take his body and to, to throw it in the sea because they thought he's dead when they came they were talking well if uh, this is true what the, uh, the Jewish are saying about uh, this uh, Jesus Christ that he rose from the dead uh, it may happen that he will uh, raise Theodore from the dead and uh, will we'll have a, a surprise there. But it was like very early in the morning, still dark, before the, the sunrise. And they were kind of afraid. But they approached and they saw Theodore kneel before the cross and pray, completely healed, no bleeding, no nothing, no scars, no nothing. So they, they said, we believe in your God. We want to be his followers too. We believe in Christ. We are Christians from now on. So other people came, they believed. Other 300 soldiers came, they believed. So when it came to, to, to the ears of the emperor again, he was so mad that he ordered uh, to one of the soldiers to go to chop his uh, head off he said, we, we cannot uh, do this uh, anymore because I will lose my power, I will, I will lose my uh, army. This guy is going to turn every, everybody against me and to his God. So this is uh, what happened. But before they chopped off his uh, head, he asked one of his closest friends to bury his uh, body in his uh, native village in uh, Afghaita, so which is in the uh, middle uh, a Asia Minor, today's Turkey. And uh, during 
this as you you can understand he performed a lot of miracles and uh, during his burial and after and so on and so forth so we are we are seeing here how god is encouraging us giving us strength when we are truly believing in him he is giving us strength and no matter what the people will say this should not affect us we have to be stable in our faith and continue the fight to the end because things like this may happen and they are still happening in our days look in middle east pretty much every day christians are tortured because of their faith and not only in middle east but also in china and in other parts of the world and uh, this will take a larger spectrum but we have to remember all the times that he is there no matter what he's there with us and he's encouraging us he's giving us the strength because on our own forget forget it we cannot stand up for that but only when we call upon his holy name when we trust him in everything and when we ask him to be there for us and to lead us and to protect us so let us pray constantly and uninterrupted the Lord's prayer no matter what where we are at work we're driving we are wherever we are let us train our mind our brain to be preoccupied with the prayer always to have the word's name on our tongue in our brain and in our heart amen god bless you all